republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sue, roll call, please. Alderman Skaggs. Here. Alderman Zerwick. Here. Alderman Stuckey. Here. Alderman Jokers. Here. Alderman Steiger. Here. Alderman Openfuse. Yes. Alderman Broomfield. Here. Alderman Ross. Here. Mayor, we have a form. Thank you. Uh, approve agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, Martin, I think we'll go right into your report. Okay. Um, attended a uh, community service foundation meeting as I do whenever they meet and uh, I just wanted to report that they made a grant award for the uh, dog park in the amount of $200 and uh, they also gave $500 at that meeting to the St. Vincent DePaul, the DePaul food pantry which said that the um, their food supplies are running dangerously low so uh, they, they helped out with that um, I'll let uh, Shauna when she gives her committee report talk about uh, the landmarks. Um, the, uh, we've been meeting with Lakeland on our insurance rates as part of the budget process. Uh, they told us to budget a 10 to 12 percent increase, although they said they, it may not be that high when it, when, when, when it all comes back in, but there, you know, it's going to be in that order of magnitude. It may be eight, you know, who knows. And that's the uh, casualty and liability insurance. Uh, we're updating our information and, and sending it to them so they can update their data to see if we can't get the best deal possible. I attended a meeting of the Industrial Development Corporation. Uh, the most significant thing there, and while it's outside the city limits, it would have an impact on us. Um, you know, there's a TIF proposed for the intersection there uh, in, in Ozora for a, a motel, restaurant, truck stop from a guy who does it and it has like 13 of them. In this, re in this region. Uh, the discussion was whether that TIF should extend to the industrial property that's adjacent to it. Um, apparently that was proposed. The TIF Commission didn't, didn't do it. Uh, there, there was uh, uh, that effort to find kind of a multi-county prime industrial property and that was one of the 11 sites that was considered. So the uh, Industrial Development Corporation voted to go on record as supporting expanding the TIF boundaries to include the adjacent industrial property uh, without having an, any project uh, so that the authority is there and can then be used to market that property to potential employers. So that was a, a pretty interesting discussion. Um, going down the list here, we started our budget process. Pam and Sue and I met to look at the department's um, and, and, and I have since met with every department director. You know, when you start a budget, you say, tell me what you think you need. Uh, and, and we didn't hold back anything, so everything gets on the table and gets discussed. Uh, we projected the revenues based on our past experience and what we think we know about next year. Uh, the difference between general revenue and the, the, the amount requested of the departments that use the general revenue for funding is uh, $700,000, and that's how much out of balance we are. So sometime between now and the end of the month, next month, we've got to try and come up with a way to propose to you uh, something that, that, that will balance. Um, my, my plan is to, uh, to, to identify those kind of non-discretionary expenditures and then to kind of give you the list of things that we could do uh, and then we just have to decide how many of those and which ones that we can put in the budget. And that's the, and we'll, we'll have work sessions to do that in, in next month. Uh, so look forward to that. Um, we've talked about this before about the budget and um, the, the salary increases that have traditionally been, except for last year, have been placed in there uh, prior to. Are we based this off of a zero? Um, a salary increase for for budget for this year there's no salary increase in the budget today okay. I will do employee evaluations since I now feel like I've been here long enough to have an informed opinion as to our employees this time last year you know I had only been here well, 
for four months and it wasn't fair to the employees or me to, to, to evaluate them. So you'll have some, uh, so, some information upon which you might base any, any decision. You know, it's going to be tight. I mean, unless we can figure out a way to get more money. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I attended the air quality meeting. You may have been reading in the paper that uh, the Ferrar monitor, there are monitors in, for air quality in, in, in St. Genevieve County, and St. Genevieve and, and has kind of dodged a bullet from emissions. Is that what you're talking about, emissions? And, uh, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an evaluation of the constituents of the air that are here. And, and, and that may be better or worse based on the emissions of industries. Uh, part of the, the of what they, they monitor, you know, it's like, <coughs> and I, I'm not an air quality specialist, but um, may come from carbon dioxide and, you know, when, from operating internal combustion engines. Uh, SEMO has done a good job of, of managing this, and they have a computer model that shows kind of where our air comes from. And uh, it, you know, it comes from places north and west of us, and it moves north of us going over uh, Illinois and in Indiana, and then it kind of drops to the south, and it comes back at us uh, after having gone over some industrialized areas and picking up whatever it is they have to bring to us. Uh, so we are the victims in some respects of the air that gets to us from other areas along those lines. We also produce our own pollutants, and uh, those then move on. People complain about us the same way I'm complaining about uh, them. So you don't, you don't have you know, like control over your, your destiny. Now, what is our destiny? Our destiny is if the air quality monitors read consistently high for certain particulates and gases as they have been, one of them has been, and we may then in St. Genevieve County or Perry <coughs> County and uh, St. Francis County be under the same kind of air uh, non-attainment regulations that are in place in St. Louis County and Jefferson County and Franklin County. The limit, and, and that would be limits on emissions by business and industry and vapor recovery systems at the gas stations and you know just the list kind of goes on you know, the bad part is that we kind of lose our competitive advantage for economic development when when that occurs at least as it relates to air quality and uh and so there's a conservative effort to try and make sure we can do the things that we can do to keep keep that number down it's just at this meeting I kind of came away from it saying, you know, we really can't do much. I mean, it, it, because of the fact that we receive what other states send us. And uh, so anyway, it, we'll con I'll continue to attend those meetings and continue to inform you of what, what we find. Martin, on that uh, monitor, isn't that in Perry County? The For our farm? monitor? Yeah, yeah. down in southern Perry County, I think. And there's one over in uh, Farmington. Farmington. We don't have one in St. Jen County at this time? No. Oh, I didn't realize. Two closest ones is near Bonterre and that one. Did they take into consideration the weather uh, as far as how hot it was and no rain? So? Yes and no. The, 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 they don't make a decision based on any one month reading, so it'll be an average over you know, some period of time, but every month, whether or not, you have um, high readings will go into the average. They won't throw a reading out because it was hot. Mm -hmm. Any more than <coughs> they'll throw one out because it's cold. <laughs> the, uh, but, but you're right that, that our weather is like the perfect oven for cooking ozone. Mm -hmm. It's just what it, uh, we did receive a letter from MoDOT concerning the safe routes for school contract. You recall, I told you we had to send it off to them. They had to approve it before we could, and so that has occurred. And the engineer is preparing the documents for signature, so <coughs> we ought to have that contract on the table for you for your, for your next meeting. That concludes my report, unless there are any questions. Okay. Terry's out of. Uh, I know we're not 
over this one here as well. Okay. Cool. Um, Eric's here, and Eric and Dave, and Eric and Dave are here. Anybody has no. any questions? Yeah, before I leave Terry's report, you know, remember we came we came to you with some uh, pro forma for sewer and water rates that, that we covered in some detail. We kind of put it on the table, but we need to as we're going into the budget cycle, we need to revisit that sooner than later. So we'll be looking forward to a work session to uh, address those rates in, in the next several weeks. Is that going to be for this next work session? I don't know. Depends on what happens in terms of priorities, but it could be, yes. If not, it'll certainly be the next one. Do you want it to be the next one? I mean, I don't want to <laughs> face the... Any, Face the music. Any questions on any of the staff reports? I have a question. Um, the bottom of Wiener Street, the main street in Wiener Street, where they said that they're waiting for the gas company to um, fix the street. Not the street. Well, kind well of the street. The so that they could leak. fix the, the water the, leak. The, the water pipe that's in there is not standard water pipe. It's some something else <laughs> and the only fittings that get fit are, are are available through the clean gas and it is those fittings that you have to get from the clean gas you need to fix the water line that's what they're waiting for is the gas coming okay but they do intend to fix it yes okay they've got it pretty much down to where it's tolerable but not something that we should have to tolerate on long term and they'll get it fixed as soon as the part comes in okay um, on the uh, on the Chief Swint's report, the fire department just make it um, known that they're still missing. There's uh, two openings on the fire department. If anyone wants to volunteer for to be a volunteer fireman, and also that um, there's still 29 unpaid fire tags outstanding for 2012. So I'm just warning citizens that uh, if you have unpaid fire tags. You could be in a world of trouble if you have a fire and we have to respond to it. So please pay your unpaid fire tags. And that's outside the city limits? Yeah. Outside the city limits, they pay the fire tag and we fight the fire. And if you don't have a fire tag and have a fire and we have to fight it, you get a bill. It's a lot cheaper to buy a fire tag. <laughs> Those bills are substantial. Do they always get them collected? Do we all? No. We don't get 100%. Have we heard anything from Michael Seal as far as uh, doing the patching in, in the street? Dave. Yes, sir. Um, have we heard anything from Michael Seal as far as uh, areas identified and uh, what do we want to do? Uh, are we going to patch it? Or, I haven't heard anything. Uh, he said he was going to be uh, probably about the third weekend in July to, to, to be now, so he, he should be calling me. If not, I'm going to give him a call because I've seen. Uh, uh, I'm Missouri Patrolman truck in town the other day, so I was kind of expecting a call from him. Can you give us just kind of an update? I've had one person ask me what all the paint circles are on the downtown areas. That's where it didn't cure fast enough, and that's where the tire were turning on them and made bare spots. And you'll see there's a lot of bare spots around the intersections where the tires were turning. So and their, their proposal is to come back and seal <coughs> those areas? Yes. They came back and they, they brought a five-gallon bucket. And they thought it was just a couple of patches, and they seen all the marks on there. So then the guy said, "We'll bring a truck back." But they've been doing a lot of work in Louisiana, so I don't know if they're back back in Missouri yet. But I will give them a call and find out. What about the burn pile? Have we gone anywhere with the burn pile about getting that taken out of there? Actually, uh, I got a hold of uh, Mr. Geck uh, a couple of days ago, and he's supposed to resubmit his bid because he he submitted it, but we can't find it. I guess. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had somebody ask, uh, just a quick question, Dave. Whenever you guys put those patches in, uh, do you guys, people drive over those and it sticks to their cars and stuff? Uh, like the asphalt pat patches? We haven't been patching with asphalt for quite a while. We've been using concrete. Okay. So I just had some citizens say, how come they leave? They, it, on my car, it's it's probably just been oh, 10 degrees. It will, yeah. 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 Up yeah. Up it's hotter. 
You guys are really good about putting barriers or markers whenever you do anything like that. Yeah, we put the heat. So oh, we've got to hurry up and get, and get done. We're going to need a barricade for June 5th. Uh, and on that note, uh, we just found out this morning, like Martin said, that uh, the county was going to finish a little sooner with their chip and seal than, than we expected. Uh, so I still have a lot of streets to get done. I've got uh, Austin Street's completely done now. St. Jimmy's done. I still got to do some work on uh, Walnut and uh, Burroughs. And Lynn Drive's going to take quite a bit. And, and, then, and the, the, the work is preparing bad spots yeah. where chip and seal wouldn't help. So you have to Big bring them up to a certain before. standard before mm -hmm. you can chip and seal over it. And uh, I'm running a little money in my budget. Do you want me well, to keep me going, or I mean, we're almost to the point where we can't stop now? Do you have any idea what? How much is it going to cost? No, not right off the top of the head. Uh, Lynn Drive's going to take the most. <coughs> I'd say probably 25, 2500. Lynn Drive's, and it depends on what you all want to do out there. Cause we got a uh, resident on the corner there of uh, what is that Audubon and Lynn that's actually uh, the grass is on our property and we need to kind of dig it back and kind of broke up all around there. So the whole length of this person's uh, property is it's ours. So we need, almost need to dig all that out and that's going to take quite a bit there. Because we tried to dig it out a few years ago and that asphalt, but that Bermuda grass just went in and just ate her, you know, just lifted it right back up. Well, we've got that much money in the difference between what was budgeted for chip and seal and what we expect it to cost, so that should not be a constraint. But that, I would say this is a... Uh, but we don't have three times that much money. We're going to so. have to, uh, I mean, it's going to be a lot for us to get all this done. So I'm, I'm going to probably pull some guys out of the park since, you know, there's no mowing other than weeds right now, so I'm going to have to pull them out to help us. Actually, I had Martin sign a paper that I was going to take a vacation next week, but throw that away, Martin. I'm going to be here because we got to get this done. And then the Jura Fed's coming, and then we got school starting. Then there's uh, holes up on 9th Street that, but Terry told me not to fix them because he was going to talk to Martin about replacing the whole water line. But I got to get that fixed for the buses because. Well, those, those replacements will be part of our conversation when we have a work session on water and sewer rates because it's. You know, but like I said, what we got to talk about. I mean, school's going to be starting here before too long, and I'm, I need to get that nice street. You know, I need to get them passed. Yeah, well, go ahead and pass. <coughs> Have okay, we, that, does that come out of the water department budget or out of the street? Hatching? Yeah. Whenever the water department has a water heat like that. Right now it comes out of the street. Right. But shouldn't they be considered well, as that's a contractor? What that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> Check the contract. You know, it's all it, the same it, 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 is, it is not in, under Alliance's contract. No, you know, so materials, yeah, I mean, can, yeah, I, I mean, I think that arguably it should come out of the water budget. Right. And as you see, under, oh, oh, Buck, I've got that drain yeah, opened yeah. up. On yeah, the, no, thank street. you. Okay. And it uh, good. seemed to work real good a while ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've been patching up yeah. on Ridgeway uh, and Rother and Ridgeway, and I'd say we've spent a lot of time on Austin Street, but it's, it's ready now. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we had a couple citizens in here a few uh, months ago about the crosswalks up on uh, 9th Street. And I have not been up there. I just curious. I just thought about that when you were talking about 9th Street. Um, Martin said something to me. He's going to get with me and show me where you all want them, and okay. we'll definitely get them before school. Okay. Thanks. Was you going to contact a <coughs> citizen to have him help? No. I gave him two months and said, if you... He said, I have volunteers, we'll take care of it. And I said, okay, we'll buy the paints if you want to do it. And I said, you got 60 days, and if you haven't got them here, then we'll just do it before school starts. And he never came back to me, so we're just going to do it. Anything else? I've got one more. I asked uh, to see if we get a report on the museum, what we've donated to the museum. Um, can, we, can we see if Pam will pull that up? Uh, that was a couple months ago. She'll pull that up. Yeah, be great. I know that street has gotten really, 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 really bad today. It's 
How much do we do? Actually, that's that's some of the spots I was talking about. We're going to have to dig up and replace because no, it won't it won't hold up on there at all. So, you know, we're, we're going to patch it's all that. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, that's on our list that uh, yeah. when we start tearing that up. I was just wondering, we had an awful lot of big trucks that came a lot of them. I think that probably is part of the reason that it's, it seems like it's going downhill really quick. <coughs> if you drive through your subdivision and you look where all the trash trucks are on the oh, side, yeah. that's where you it's all that. pushing down. So. Yeah. And then we had a lot of the 18 wheels come through there too. Lots of them. Well, that's why we're putting the concrete in there. And yeah, that, okay. and then Austin will too. Okay. Okay. Anyway, you guys did a good job. Thank you. It's, 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 it's ready to be chipped and sealed. So. Yeah. And most of the people on there we talked to were really happy about it. Yeah, well, you had, you had, did you have every marker that the city owns on that street? Pretty close. That's what I thought. Good job, thanks. Well, it is up to code, just to let you know. It was brought, there was no violations on it. We and Mark brought it up, so it wasn't violations. The exterior. The exterior, yeah. He's going to bring it. He's going to bring it back to Inside now. preservation. Inside. Yeah. And uh, apparently he tends to make it a habitable structure, which he can use as kind of a guest house. He's not going to live here himself. But, uh, More like the Beckett, like how the Beckett has with the porch around it and it's the standing room. Yeah, he's got a good and he's going to put a, the roof on it like the Bolduc house. So. Mm. And he's it's like a <coughs> kid in candy store. Mm. Control, control. He is very <laughs> excited. Very and he, yeah, he is very capable of doing it. So I mean, he gets through that, just uh, let it know. We'll find another one for it. And he's been doing a lot of work in St. Genevieve anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that was a good, good thing. Is that the only one on Ziegler? Or are there two addresses? Ziegler's L-shaped. It looks like a block long, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's L-shaped, I believe. Yeah, it just kind of curved. I was down at the abstract part. office, and they have one of the really old maps down there, and it, it showed how the creek was not even where the creek right. is now and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 151 Ziegler. This is one across mm -hmm. the Bernard trail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the, on the so, sign committee, I don't know... Um, I don't know if Martin mentioned that uh, we got the grant. Uh, you know. Okay. Anyway, we applied for the $4,800 grant. Uh, it's been approved, so uh, we'll be, uh, we will be moving along with the uh, assignment and getting everything set up. And what's, so the, what's the timetable on that? As Before far as, uh, Bring up the signs. <coughs> or ordering the signs or. Probably in about two weeks, we'll probably have the bids out and as far as uh, ordering the signs. Uh, and then we'll go from there and make sure that everything is correct. Because, you know, it takes a little time to make sure that you are getting exactly what you want in the arrows pointing the right way. And so we'll be, we'll be going out and looking at the locations again and making sure we're getting the right sign it's for that location. The district and the school district about taking Placing their sign. Right, we got to talk to them about uh, like the ferry. 
the, the ferry would be on the sign, so we don't need these little signs up all over the yeah. place with ferry on. On the electric poles? Mm -hmm. uh, right. So, so anyway, we'll be moving ahead on that. These signs are not going on the electric pole. Well, no, these are going their own. In their own. So, oh, they, right. They'd be, they'd be mounted mm -hmm. on their own pole. Mm -hmm. Unless we have to. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, minutes of the July 12th meeting. Move. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the closed session for July the 12th is still pass out. Big secret, no action taken. Can you second that? Catch it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And the financial report for June. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Oh, no. I'm for it. Okay. Uh, resolution number 2012-56, a resolution of the City of St. Genevieve, Missouri, stating intent to seek funding through the 2012 Assistance to Firefighters Grant AFG program and authorizing the mayor to pursue activities in an attempt to secure grant funding to purchase a new ladder truck for the St. Genevieve Fire Department. This is if you read Nick's uh, notes or his letter. It is basically the same thing that we applied for last year. Just trying to accept. Accept. He's got that hundred thousand dollar local contribution he didn't have last year, which he expects to you know, in, improve our chances of being considered here. Fifty thousand of which he has in commitments from local industry. So we'd still be looking for some local dollars. Or I think we did talk oh about that last year. And well, I mean, we, you guys. He had, he had some local. I think he had the commitments. I thought he said he was ready. To, he was sending out letters, and, he, and now he's got, he took, well, whatever. I think the only thing you're, that you might be sticking, or not sticking our neck out, but committing to is if, if that falls short, that we would end up having to come up with, which is in the rural fire fund if he has to use it. But if, again, if we can get. A six or seven hundred thousand dollar fire truck for even a hundred thousand dollars. If we had to pay for all of it, we would be kind of nuts not to do it. So, and it's it is in the rural fire fund if we've got to go after it there. So, the money would be there. I know he's got commitments, some verbal commitments Move for through. probably half of it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Resolution 2012-57, a resolution reappointing Frank Myers to the St. Genevieve Landmarks Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And old business, bill number 3875, a second reading. An ordinance amending chapter 405, zoning regulation section 405.200. Special Use Regulations of the St. Genevieve Code of Ordinances. Second. Roll call. Alderwoman Zerwig? Yes. Alderman Stupi? Yes. Alderman Skaggs? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderwoman Burnfield? Yes. <coughs> Alderman Openfield? Yes. Alderman Steiger? Yes. Alderman Ross? Yes. You have eight yes votes. Bill number 3875 now becomes ordinance number 3815. Okay, bill number 3876, second reading. An ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve, Missouri to establish a procedure to disclose potential conflicts of interest and substantial interests for certain officials. Have two approved. Second. Roll call. Alderman Broomfield? Yes. Alderman Ross? Yes. Alderman Openfield? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Steiger? Yes. Alderman Zerwig? Yes. Alderman Skaggs? Yes. Alderman Stupi? Yes. 
eight yes votes. Bill number 3876 now becomes ordinance number 3815. Thank you. Bill number 3877, second reading. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Jokers Incorporated in the amount of $153,273 for the Westwood Drive Improvements Project. Roll call. Alderman Oakenfuss? Yes. Alderman Skaggs? Yes. Alderwoman Zerwig? Yes. Alderwoman Broomfield? Yes. Alderman Stubbe? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Ross? Yes. Alderman Steiger? Yes. Eight yes votes. Bill number 3877 now becomes ordinance number 3817. Okay, thank you. Um, new business, bill number 3879, first reading. An ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease option agreement with Pitney Bowes, Incorporated for a digital mailing system, DM100 series. This is to replace our current uh, machine, which we lease. The lease is cheaper than our current, and it's more up-to-date technology. Uh, among the things that we can do with this is we can establish an account for each department, and we can track mailing by department without having to do it in a manual log so it's uh, kind of no cost and better equipment and this is the monthly amount here correct any other discussion you may okay Can we? Include, uh, Keith? more discussion can we do the second reading today too? So it's up to you let's do this First All in favor of the first reading? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah, Somebody want to make some motion to do uh, that? Can I motion to do the second reading? Second. All in favor of the second reading of Bill Number 3879? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Second reading, Bill Number 3879. An ordinance of the City of St. Jeremy, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease option agreement with Pitney Bowes Incorporated for a digital mailing system, DM100 series. Approved. Second. 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 Is that a typo? What? Shouldn't have been 78 to 79? I just seen that too. Okay. 3878, actually. Yeah. Good catch. Oh, okay. This is, this is Bill 3878. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, roll call. Okay, Alderman Ross? Yes. Alderman Skaggs? Yes. Alderwoman Zerwig? Yes. Alderwoman Broomfield? Yes. Alderman Stupy? Yes. Alderman Steiger? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Oakenfuse? Yes. Eight yes votes. Bill number 3878 now becomes ordinance number 3818. You're all right with that. I just really passed 3879 in the first reading. Just uh, type up. You okay mm -hmm. with that? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, any public comments? Anyone? Okay. Other business? Uh, two items listed. We have approval of a certificate of appropriateness for Scott Barley to demolish the building and canopy at 795 St. Genevieve Drive. <coughs> this is approved by Landmarks. Uh, the old smoke shop yeah. building yeah. there next to him. I, I, I don't know if everybody's aware, but uh, they're going to be making improvements to the dealership to satisfy General Motors so as much as anything. Yeah. And, uh, and and removing this is part of that process. Yeah, um, just for point of clarification on, on procedure. Now this this property is outside of um, Landmark's jurisdiction. Um, correct. We is, is that not correct? Yes. Yeah. It no, it's, it's 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 not outside of their jurisdiction. Out, well, not in a historic of their district. District. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so I mean, I'm just out of curiosity. Was it supposed to go in front of the Landmark's yes. commission? The, the ordinance requires all demolition. That's something we need to address when we're going through the landmarks changes that we anticipate in the near future. Um, we did discuss that at the landmarks meeting. Uh, and 
the kind of the inappropriateness of their having to approve this one, sure. and and they all kind of agreed with that. Uh, the question then was, should you have to consider any demolition permit outside of the of, of the district? And there wasn't total agreement on that. There was some statement that there, you know, there may be structures, the old smokehouse or something that's not in the district that we want to, to consider. Uh, so we'll address that when we when we make the language changes. Okay. Um, what, Sir, are we supposed to this? Is there a motion? What, uh, yeah. what was the landmarks vote on this? Was it a they unanimous? Unanimous. Thank you. Move to. Second. Chet Chet, sir. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And secondly, approval of a temporary liquor license request for Charlottesville Vineyard LLC for the Jure Fete celebration on August the 13th and August 14th at the corner of Main and Merchant Streets. Discussion. Okay. Um, on this one, I, I don't know what the, the serving time is, um, but I think Jure Fete has different serving times for the, the time of the event. They've got from 11 to 11. Um, yeah. I, I think it's like 8 or 9. Is it, it 6? No, on no, Sunday. Right. Saturday. 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 Saturday it's 8. Nope. Well, they do the, the best in the Lions Club afterwards. For the Jury Fed itself, it was, it's 10 a.m. to 6 on Saturday and 9 to 4 on Sunday. Mm -hmm. If there are any activities that have been like, Again, this is on maybe on private property, so maybe George Fett doesn't. Uh, I was just it's it is that weekend and it is in the downtown area, so. right there by the it's wine park. shop, isn't it? So, are you, are you questioning whether mm -hmm. it's it's whether their hours should be the same as George Fett or correct? Well, okay, the purpose of the event. it's kind of yeah. up to them. I mean, I, they may not think <laughs> well, there's sufficient some, demand for their product before 11 a.m., so they don't see any reason of being there at nine, correct. Well, I think it's, 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 it's on the, the top side. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's didn't on the other go, side. Didn't it go to eight last year? I think, I think it did. No, last year was six o'clock. The year before that was eight. And it was decided it was too hot. The vendors uh, were not happy with that. And they were going to have to have But, no, but weren't beer gardens so allowed to beer, beer stands to stay out until eight? What? I don't know what the Lions did. I don't remember having any. I think the Lions Club had music and stuff. I know the Lions stayed open later. They stayed open until I think it was 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock on Saturday. No, it wasn't that late. Oh, no. I, I, I think it went from. It used to be the beer gardens had to close at 6, and I think they last year it was first year they went to 8. I Are they believe. Going to 8 this year? I think we changed that. I think the ordinance. Too. Too. We changed it. We had, we changed that, we had to change that by ordinance last year. So. Move approval for uh, whatever's within um, ordinance. Yeah. Within guidelines, okay. So, Alderman Steiger's made a motion to approve Seven. this based on the jury yeah. fed requirements. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? What is on that? Okay, anything else? Any other business? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, next year if that means always second, and they would appreciate if all the um, organizations would start chipping in and helping a little bit with volunteers. And they're getting pretty wore out. What they're telling me. That what are they needing volunteers for? Everything. everything. I mean, they just. And, and they would like some people to come to the meetings because there's hardly nobody there. Do they advertise their meetings? Yeah. Personally, I think every organization has, should have to supply two every day, two Saturday and two Sunday, to help with it. Force them into it? Well, I mean, as far as the Lions Club, I mean, every member of the Lions is already dedicated to a workshop. That's an argument. So, I don't know. I'm just telling you, they're getting wore out. And maybe I mean, I don't know. Might it's a very tough place. event to pull off. Huh? It's a very tough and tiresome event to pull off and organize and to keep it going. And right. I, it's been the same people for years and years. We better start doing something about it before it's too late. 
I think it's burned out. Any other business? Uh, I, would, did, I, I would like to discuss this if we can. Just later. Later, okay. Um, okay, if, if not, then I'd like to go into closed session to talk about uh, litigation and legal matter. You want to take a break first? Yeah. Move to go to closed no. session for okay. legal matters. Second. You will call through. Alderman Steiger? Yes. Alderman Skaggs? Yes. Alderman Stupe? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderwoman Zerwig? Yes. Alderman Oakenfield? Yes. Alderwoman Burnfield? Yes. Alderman Ross? Yes. Eight yes votes. Okay. So let's we'll just take about a five minute break or so.